Welcome back to Nature League. Each week, we explore the amazingness of life on Earth. But much like everything else, there's bad that comes with the good. To really think about life on Earth, we also need to consider loss of life on Earth. That's right. It's time to talk extinction. So let's start with some definitions. If we want to talk about extinction, we should have a working definition to go off of. In biology, we typically talk about extinction as the cessation of existence of a species or group of taxa reducing biodiversity. Cessation just means no longer having or the lack of, so lack of existence. And this can be of a species or an entire group of species. And what happens when you have extinction events is that biodiversity goes down. So what's the actual moment of extinction? Well, we can generally consider this to be the death of the last individual of that species. However, the capacity to breed and recover may have been lost before this point that we're calling the moment of extinction. And in this case, we refer to these species as functionally extinct. Basically, imagine you have two individuals left, but for whatever reason, they aren't able to breed. That species will go extinct, even though there are two individuals left. Not everything is created equal in terms of the chance of extinction or the probability. For example, we see different problems with populations, particularly ones that are sparse to begin with. When you have really sparse populations, females may have a smaller chance of meeting a male, and so there is less of a chance for reproduction to occur. Also, if you have small populations, they can sometimes experience increased death rates, usually due to greater predation. This is also a major problem. And with small or sparse populations, they actually might not be large enough to stimulate social behavior necessary for successful reproductive activity. Some species have certain behaviors that are cued in in social situations, and they need a certain amount of individuals for these behaviors to happen. Another concept to consider within the realm of extinction is the idea of a population or genetic bottleneck. This is when you have a significant percentage of a population killed or prevented from reproducing. Some other definitions are when a population is reduced by 50% or more. With genetic bottlenecks, you can have increases in inbreeding, and this is due to having a reduced pool of possible mates. If there are traits that wind up being harmful to an individual and then the species or the population, this winds up being an issue and can lead to increased chance of extinction. So who is actually most vulnerable to something like extinction? There's some traits that we've seen over time that wind up being correlated with a higher chance of an extinction event. One of these is if the population or species is naturally rare. So just in general, there aren't that many of them. Also, how big the range size matters. If they aren't a species that winds up having a really big range in places to go, we do see higher rates of extinction. Also, reproduction matters. So if you have a species with low fecundity, that's the actual reproductive rate, that's an issue as well. Another trait of species that might be more vulnerable to extinction are ones that are dependent on unpredictable resources. So if you have a species that has some kind of a food or maybe some kind of a habitat preference that's really variable, this can be a problem and lead to a higher vulnerability. And of course, as the human population continues to grow, species that are more vulnerable to human persecution are also at a higher chance of extinction. Other general traits that we see that increase extinction probability are things like larger body size, small or restricted geographic range, habitat or food specialization, lack of genetic diversity, and loss of alternate prey species. Extinction isn't just something that happens because of human pressures. There's also an extinction rate that's normal in the fossil record, and this is known as the background extinction rate. Throughout the fossil record, we define extinction events as relatively short periods with greatly increased extinction rates. You may have heard the phrase mass extinction. A mass extinction event must eliminate more than 60% of species in a relatively short period of geological time with widespread impacts. Mass extinction events are important and matter because of the disruptive effect they have on the way that biodiversity develops. So we talked about two different kinds of extinction. First, natural or background extinction, which is when each year you lose a small number of species and they become extinct naturally. We've also talked about a mass extinction. And these are periods when the Earth's biodiversity is drastically reduced, when large numbers of species become extinct. In general, scientists agree that there have been five mass extinctions in the Earth's history. If you're not familiar with Earth's mass extinctions, here's a little bit of a highlight reel. We had one in the late Permian, and this is when 90% of shallow water marine invertebrates disappeared. You might have also heard of the Cretaceous extinction event. Why? 
because that's when the dinosaurs vanished. And dinosaurs are awesome, so we definitely talk about this extinction event a lot, even though other ones have actually had a higher loss of biodiversity. And the most recent one is the one in the Pleistocene. And that's when we saw large mammals die off, and this was only a matter of tens of thousands of years ago. These are all mass extinction events of the past. But what about extinction happening today? Well, the leading cause of extinction, at least right now, and based on the data we have available, is habitat loss or destruction. Basically, species don't have enough evolutionary time to adapt to how fast these changes are taking place. To think about current extinction rates, we have to compare them to something. And typically, we compare them to the background extinction rate. Most scientists believe that current extinction rates are at 100 to 1,000 times higher than background rates. Assuming an extinction rate of 0.1%, which is more on the conservative side, we're actually losing 5,000 species a year if we assume that there are 5 million species. Now, of course, there's a lot of assumptions here, but these are just kind of our best estimates at present. Other estimates say that we might lose 25% of current animal and plant species by the year 2050, and even some estimates say 50% by the year 2100. One thing we're pretty sure about is that extinction rates right now are increasing, and the growth of the human population will increase this loss. And habitat also matters when it comes to extinction and biodiversity. For example, tropical forests, coral reefs, wetlands, and estuaries, which are sites of new species and speciation events, are currently being destroyed. So, are we currently in the Earth's sixth mass extinction? Yes, and maybe no. The thing is, it's really complicated but we can look at certain things that are unique about the current loss of species. One of the things that's unique is the time scale. And another thing that's unique is the root cause, that being a conscious living species that knows what it's doing and can think about the consequences. Here's what I mean by this. In Earth's history, there have been extinction events where a single species has caused a lot of problems. So I'm thinking about cyanobacteria and how they changed Earth's atmosphere, pumping out oxygen and basically killing things with oxygen toxicity. Now, even though that happened, and that was an extinction event due to maybe one or a few species, to our knowledge, those cyanobacteria didn't know what they were doing. They weren't aware of it. They weren't having meetings to discuss what to do. It just happened. Again, to the best of our knowledge, but that's what we have to go on. I bring up consciousness and knowledge of actions because I really think that's the difference between some of these past events and what we have right now. Humans have knowledge that species are being lost. And because of that, we have an actual responsibility to consider the cause and effects as we move forward. So why does extinction matter? What happens if species become extinct? Well, we lose a lot of things that species are. And we can kind of start by going through these like the values in biodiversity. There's instrumental value, things that are actually useful and provide us services directly, like having food, lumber, or even pharmaceuticals. And one of my favorite values related to biodiversity are actually non-use values. So there's existence value of biodiversity, knowing it's there, even if we never see them individually or in person, still gives us some kind of hope or happiness. Same with aesthetic value, appreciating it for its beauty, which would be lost when species go extinct. Also something like bequest value, knowing that if a species goes extinct, the future generations or our family won't get to know that species themselves. And losing species also means losing what they do in their ecosystems. Each species is a component of an entire ecosystem, and that has functions like energy flow and nutrient recycling and population control. Everything is connected, and so losing pieces absolutely affects the entire system. If we just look at it from a human-centric perspective, altogether preventing extinction helps us sustain our own health and well-being. But if we take humans out of it, there's also something to be said for the intrinsic value of species existing for their own sake. So what does the future look like? Right now, there's insufficient knowledge of the natural world to predict how much extinction ecosystems can experience without losing major function. If the present extinction event continues unchecked, we could push ecosystems beyond the threshold at which they sustain the well-being of the species within them. Overall, biodiversity has recovered following each mass extinction throughout Earth's history. But 
only after the cause of the event had gone away. Thanks for watching this episode of Nature League. If you have questions about the extinction process or whether or not we're in the sixth mass extinction, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll be answering them throughout the week. And to keep going on Life on Earth adventures with us here, you can go to youtube.com slash nature league, subscribe and share.